Welcome to the Lou Riley Live Show, a podcast about health, wellness, motivation, and success. Now, here's your host, Mr. Lou Riley. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time of day it is, wherever you are, how are you? This is Lou Riley. It's been about a week since I've given you a podcast and I took off for a little bit just to do some fueling up, to take sort of a mini vacay from the podcast and to step back and to see where I'm taking this thing. And some very good things have come as a part of it. I am now in the process of putting a a, a sort of an ebook together or something I'm going to that's going to be uh, available digitally and uh, definitely going to take some of the concepts I've used from this podcast, but to do an even better job of really focusing in on a particular angle and, and writing from that. So definitely uh, I'll keep you guys posted as to when that will be available and when it's further along in the process, but uh, going to get that done. Today, uh, and of course, let me go back and do a little housekeeping. Definitely, please, uh, if you have not, make sure you follow me at Lou Riley Live, uh, Facebook, my Facebook page, uh, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, all at Lou Riley Live. Uh, To the best of my capability, I I keep up and I I put out little extra bits and pieces of things. I'm starting to put out some some daily affirmations or some just a positive word on those through those social media channels. And I'll be doing a lot more as time progresses. So if you have not yet, please make sure you you make that investment of uh, make that investment in me. I, I, I will do my best to to live up to that, to make you proud of that decision. <clears throat> what I want to what I want to go into today and what's on my mind is a, a particular young man. And this probably applies to, to a number of you, but. I've I've coached and I've mentored in the past and there's someone in mind and I won't mention his name and I'll do my best to not make it obvious to those who here may be able to decipher, but he's at a place where he's at, he's, he's, he's got an opportunity to do the things that he says he wants to do with his life. But for some reason, uh, he won't take a, he won't walk through that door, you know, uh, He's been given instruction, told exactly what to look for, how it's going to come, what it's going to look like. And he's taken that instruction. He's gotten him to, and it's gotten him to this place. But he's now at a place where it's on him. And for some reason, he's allowing his ego to stand in place of his destiny. And that's that's what I fear most. So I'll tell you, uh, I sent him ever so often. I sent him a couple of quotes or, or positive thoughts or things of that nature, just a, a little something to help, hopefully to help trigger his own, trigger his mind to get him to start solving the puzzle for himself. You know, I think so many times one of the mistakes we make as adults is that we try to give children, young people, we, we try to give them the answer to the question. And sometimes we need to make sure that they are equipped to figure the question out, given a few pieces of the equation. But a lot of times, and it's rooted, some, I can partially say it's rooted in love, but that's a completely different topic. Uh, but it also is partly rooted in fear. Sometimes we just fear that <clears throat> we fear that without the input that we're giving, that this person is going to make a bad decision. And now we're taking on guilt for the for the choices that they didn't make. And truth be told is that when it's all said and done, it's that each of us has our own destiny that we're responsible for for finding out, for seeking, for fulfilling, for making an attempt to fulfill. And I see so often, especially in the realm of sports. I see a lot of parents who do too much for the child. They have trouble letting go. And they think that they actually have the capability to protect their child from everything. And the truth is that you don't. And I'm not saying that every situation is is one that's going to be conducive to your child's betterment. But it's up to you as a parent to do your research, to do your homework, to observe, to ask questions. And I definitely encourage you to do so when you decide to put your child into a, an athletic program or a 
a, a leisure activity type program. Do your research. Know who you're dealing with. Know their background. But when you're in a situation, and especially from the standpoint where I was, where there were three men, three men, th- three very strong male figures who had been successful at dealing with kids all their lives, you can sort of drop, you can sort of, I don't want to say drop your kid off, although that's happened, another story, but but you can present your child, and you know, I think as coaches, once your child steps out of that car and crosses over to that line to the playing field, they're ours, they are ours, and trust that we are going to, with love, we're going to bend that sap, we're going to raise that child up in a way that's going to be conducive to their success, not only right now, but in the future. Because as a coach, as a person who's coached youth sports, you know, winning is great. Please don't get me wrong. But I would in I would in a moment's know to sacrifice winning in order to make sure your child has the lessons that they need to learn in order to 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 induce winning or to create a win later on in life. I'm not very interested in being the eight year old champ. Great, but let's be honest, you know, and maybe I'm saying let's be honest, but maybe you don't know. That's not the end all be all. Trust when I say this. Now, when it becomes a money situation, when they're 15 and 16 and colleges are taking a look at your kid in terms of offering a scholarship, that's when you want to be in a much better situation, you know. So and forgive the you knows. I don't know how many I've said so far. I try to I try to leave that alone, but it happens. But I'll share with you a quote that I shared with, with, with my young friend and trying to get him to see that the problem isn't what you are seeing. The problem is you. And the quote is and kind of like what I just said. The quote is actually the problem is not the problem. The problem is your attitude towards your problem. And so many times when you're a young person, when you live inside that that yet to be developed egotistical state where you only see the world from one perspective or from a limited perspective, you hear things like when and when you don't get selected for a thing, you hear things like, well, you know, those guys aren't as good as I am. I don't know why the coach didn't pick me. Or, you know, I think the coach likes certain people for certain reasons. It's, it's political. Well, this person's dad paid this amount of money, so the coach has to play him. You know, I know I'm better than this person, but, you know, and if you are better, then play better. You know, and, and sometimes that coach can put you at per, can put you in a position that you're not used to playing. And sometimes coaches can do that just to see how you're going to respond to adversity. You know, in so many ways, think about it. We may stake a claim and we tell life, we tell the universe, we tell God, however you want to define it or describe it. We tell God where we want to be in life and God doesn't put us there. He puts us someplace that we may not think is conducive to it. But for some reason, uh, the almighty knows and understands that there's something there for us to learn in order for us to be where we want to be. Sometimes if we were just automatically given what we wanted, what we dreamed about. We don't appreciate it because we didn't go through the steps in order to truly to truly understand how valuable it is, you know, and that's just it. You know, um, you've got to and I say got to, but you ain't got to do nothing but stay who you are and, and die. You ain't got to do nothing, you know, so I, I say you got to in relative terms. And, and I say that for the person that truly is working towards achieving what it is they want out of life, you know, you're going to bump your head a few times. You understand? That's going to happen. That's that's just a part of it. And you have to learn how to look at things differently. So like that quote talks about the problem isn't the problem. The problem is your attitude towards the problem. When you meet with adversity, if you start cussing it out and just figuring, you know, I'll never get it done. It's too hard. You, you you turn away. You walk away. You don't step up to the challenge. Well, are you really committed to being, doing, and having that which you say? You know, uh, just today, I pulled this off of one of my Facebook friends' uh, walls. It says, chances of success. Zero percent. When you And it's, that's the kind of your response to adversity is going to determine your chances of success. So the person who says, I won't, there's a 0% chance. 
The person that says I can't, there's a 10% chance. The person that says I don't know how, there's a 20% chance you'll succeed. The person that says I wish I could, there's a 30% chance. The person that says I want to, there's a 40% chance. The person that says I think I might, there's a 50% chance you're going to succeed. The person who says that's 50%. The person who says I might, there's a 60% chance that you succeed. The person that says or, or really feels and thinks that their attitude is, I think I can, there's a 70% chance you can succeed. The person who says, I can, there's an 80% chance, 80 chance that you're going to succeed. The person who says that I am going to succeed, there's a 90% chance you'll succeed. And obviously the person that says, I did, there's a 100% chance that you're going to become successful. And all of those, I won't, I can, I don't know how, I wish I could, I want to, I think I might, I might, I think I can, I can, I am. Even in saying and repeating those things I just shared with you, there's a whole different feeling inside your chest when you say it. Try it. Isn't there a difference between I won't and I can't as opposed to I can and I am? Do you feel that difference inside your chest? Do you feel that? You know, these words and these thoughts are real. And being able to take this and to change your attitude, no matter how far away you think you are from the truth of what you want to be. When you learn how to use these words in order to sort of, and again, this is sort of that self-hidden hypnosis type thing I've spoken about in an earlier podcast episode. These are some of the things or some of the exercises slash activities that you can do to start to change your mind, to start to change that automatic reaction. And even if your automatic reaction is the negative, you've got to pull out some notes of things such as this and this podcast and say, okay, my, my, my immediate reaction was, I mean, I don't know if I can do this. And just by saying, I think I can do this. By saying, I can do this and saying, I am going to do this. You are literally changing the rhythm of your energy. You tr you're turning yourself into a can-do person. Because the person who thinks they can and who knows they can and believes that they are going to do a thing. It's going to become difficult to find a way not to. These are so very simple and, and they're such very simple concepts, but they're so vast and deep to understand because the person who still lives in that egotistical state where they see the world from their limited point of view, it's difficult to get past the blaming phase. You know, as they would say, when you point the finger, you've got three more pointing back at you. So often it's very difficult for that person until they've gone through a thing. And I believe where I am with this young man that I, I know very well, I'm at a place where I'm saying to myself, do I really step in and intervene or do I sit back and let this lesson happen for him? And if I do intervene, I benevol and I believe I will, I just want to question him in terms of just seeing where he is. Just how does he honestly see this thing happening as it goes on around him? See, the problem that we have when we give advice is that think of it as you with you, the person who has the advice or you, the person who is more experienced in a thing. I, I think of it as you sitting at the top of a mountain, being able to look down and see everything. Right. And on this mountain, there's a winding road. So you can see this road. On this mountain from the top to the bottom, you can see everything on this road. And the person you're trying to give this help to is in the car and traveling up this mountain. And you see a boulder that started up at the top that's going to eventually collide with that person coming up the bottom from the bottom of the hill. And you're calling down to that person saying, hey, be careful because there's this thing coming your way. And that person is saying, no, there's not. I'm good. The roads are clear. Well, you know, the person who's right. And, and in that moment... If you look at it from the both vantage points, each of them are right to a degree. But the person with the better vantage point is 100% correct because they can see everything. They can see everything that that is going to happen before it reaches you. And that's the problem with giving advice, especially when you've got that great advantage point, is that because many people can't see that very far ahead of them, they're going to reject your advice. 
It's not necessarily a personal thing. Maybe sometimes it is. But in their minds, I'm just going to trust what I can see. But as I mentioned in an Instagram video, it says that, and I, I pulled this from an author. It's not mine, but soon it will be. Trust, I'll reword this thing. But it says that in our walk in the light that illuminates our lives, as we walk in our own light, and when we one day reach the end of the light that we walk in, and there's only darkness ahead of us, you've got to have the faith and belief that as you enter that darkness and out of your light, there's either going to be solid ground for you to stand on or wings there so that you can fly. So many of us only walk in the light that surrounds us. That darkness represents the end of your comfort zone. Represents that place beyond your own understanding. That darkness represents all the things you dream about. Your ability to keep walking towards that is going to be determined by how badly you truly want to be, do, or have that particular thing. So guys, I'm going to wrap up there. As I, I think I've already begun my final descent in this podcast. But again, for those of you who are in that position of the person with the better vantage point, be patient with that person coming up the hill. You know, sometimes we have trouble getting out of our own way. Sometimes we do. Sometimes it's our ego. <laughs> Did I say sometimes? <laughs> All the times. <laughs> It's our ego getting in the way, you know, and I can remember my mother and not to go so deep into detail, but there was something that I was going through in my life that the answer required me to simply remain faithful and to let things happen. And, you know, so many times we think that we need to intervene. Our ego tells us to step in and to say something, to step in and argue. We get this big emotional push and we just out there acting on emotion. And we don't really realize that we're probably doing more harm than good for our situation. And I can remember being in that place so many years ago. And my mother simply said, well, son, if you say you believe in God and if you say you believe in, 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 in what he does for you, why do you keep getting in his way? You know, and of course, you know, and not of course, if you know me, of course, I had to step back and laugh. And I was like, wow. How true. How true. So I'm going to ask each and every one of you with that thing that you've been struggling with in your life, with that thing that you can't seem to get up, get out of your way. The thing that your ego is standing in the way of you getting to where you want to be. Or your ego is standing in the way of you receiving the messages that you're supposed to receive. If you really believe that a thing is for you, then why are you getting in the way of your blessings? Why are you blocking it? You know, as the old folks used to say, you know, let go and let God. At, at least that's what they say while I grew up. You know, lean not upon your own understanding. You know, there are those who see the world in a much different light than we do. And this is why, in part, it's so very important to be able to begin to surround yourself with people who are probably a little bit smarter than you. As they say, if you take a poll of the friends that you hang around, you know, as I say, four or five people, you, you, you are going to become the sum total of the people that you keep company with. If you look around and you're the and if you're the smartest person in your group, it's time to change your surroundings. You know, as they say, if you hang with nine broke friends, you're bound to be the tenth. Birds of a feather flock together, or how can two men walk lest they agree? Guys, part of changing your surroundings and clearing a path to receive what you're supposed to receive is is having to let some people go everybody's not going to make the journey with you okay 
And sometimes, and I, and I keep saying sometimes, that's me being, being facetious. I'm being a butthole. Your ego ain't going to make that trip either. You got to get past that as well. Now, your ego serves a purpose. But when it starts blocking the lessons and the things that you're supposed to receive, it becomes a problem. Guys, learn how to let go some. Learn how to let the universe, let these things take their course. You know, it's like cooking. And this is my last example. It's like cooking. One of my simplest explanations of cooking is just simply, it's just degrees of heat. You know, that's that to me, that's all cooking is adding heat in particular increments at, for given amounts of time in order p- to produce the end result. And you can cook something at, a, at, at too high of a heat and it may look like it's done. But when you cut into it, it's still raw because it's not ready. So many times we can put so much pressure on what we want to be, do and have and become. And we think that we're ready. But when you go inside, it's still raw. It hadn't had a, had its time to go through its process. Guys, when you get on that right track and everything has a process, learn how to trust the process. Learn how to lean on people who've gone through it first. Too many times we try to reinvent the wheel. We try to act like we're the first to do a thing when we're not. It makes no sense to start reinventing the wheel when it's already been made over and over and over again. Guys, whatever it is you want to become, life is full of those examples. You simply need to pay attention to be humble and ask questions, receive the information, receive feedback. And if you're not ready to take that journey, ask yourself, what is it that I need to do in order to prepare for that journey? You know, not looking at somebody else who's who's who in your eyes is on that journey and starting to hate on that person and become upset because you're not where you want to be. But ask yourself, what is it that I need to do? What is it that what is it that I need to do? You know, the the Reverend Ike, an older preacher, Reverend Ike. And I heard this from Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, who's the author of Think and Grow Rich and a couple of other books that were highly influential for a person of, uh, f- for me um said he asked reverend ike what's the key to success and reverend ike said the key to success is mind your own business <laughs> and that's exactly how we said it the key to success is to mind your own business imagine how far along we all could be if we were simply like students focusing on what it is we need to do instead of focusing on other people and their progress focus on what you need to do focus on filling your space get out of your own way change your attitude attitude determines altitude change your attitude and watch this world open up and make you take all the wonderful blessings that are there for uh, that are there for you to receive Guys, this is Lou Riley signing off on another podcast. I really hope, trust, and believe that there's somebody out there that needed to hear this message, that it reaches you, that it helps you along your journey. If it helps you along your journey, helps you get out of your way, helps me get out of my way because I listen to this stuff too like you guys do uh, on the back end. And, I, I, you know, it, it helps me as well. But if I haven't said it before to each and every one of you who've taken the time out to take a listen, thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, an extra special thank you to those who actually take the time to to leave a comment, to, to shoot me a message, and let me know they appreciate what they hear. It really helps keep me going. It helps me to maintain trust that part of my former self would be to fall off on these podcasts and to find a reason not to do them. And I was so close to not laying this down today. You have no idea. Fortunately, when I was out on my walk, I was jotting down notes while I was walking to go back to. And I found that quote that I shared with my young friend uh, by way of text message. And that really sent me back into the place I needed to be in order to make this podcast. This stuff's almost pretty much off the top of my head. You know, I do take a couple of bullet points so I can keep talking on it. But once I start, I just let go and I let it happen. So guys, this is Lou Riley signing off. And I guess I shouldn't apologize for the time because I took the time I needed to deliver this message. See you guys next week.